All right, what up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Living the Dream podcast. Today on the show, we have Daniel Blue, who is the owner of Quest Education. Daniel, how you doing? Doing great, Timmy. Thank you for having me on here today. Of course. Thanks for coming on. And we'd like to jump right in. So if you could start with telling us a little bit more about yourself and what you like to do for fun, that'd be great. So, Timmy, there's trillions of dollars, like an enormous amount of money that people are sitting on. This is money that they worked many, many hours. They sweat, they bled to make this money, and it's trillions and trillions of dollars that's just sitting there. And these people think that they cannot access this money until they are quote unquote retired. And that's a huge myth in America. There is a legitimate way to access retirement money, penalty and tax free now, and use that money to do some really cool things like start a business use the money to pay off high interest rate debt or invest into real estate or precious metals. There's a lot of options that people have when it comes to controlling their own retirement accounts. It's just, unfortunately, the the education, the the knowledge, the awareness isn't there. So that's what my firm does is is bringing that to the surface and, and helping people understand some of the options that are out there. So people can become captains of their own ship and, uh, you know, start moving and, and shaking and making moves. There we go. There we go. I love that. Yeah. Um, just creative financing in general, accessing retirement funds, then getting a group of friends together and accessing your retirement funds together and buying stuff. That stuff gets exciting. <laughs> it, it does. And I will say, I didn't answer your, your, your question in regards to fun. I really have been getting into long distance running. I've been having a lot of fun with that. Been uh, doing that over the last few months. We're recording this podcast at the end of August and uh, June of this year, I started getting into long distance running and I've really enjoyed it because of the the mental test. And I went from not running at all to, I uh, did a 41 miler uh, last month. I ran 32 miles last week and uh, just enjoying that side of things because as entrepreneurs, people in, in high performance jobs, we, we've got to deal with pressure. We've got to deal with stress. We've got to deal with hitting walls where you want to give up, you're doubting yourself and running has really taught me a lot of things in terms of you know, not giving up and, and just building that, that mental, that mental toughness that we all need to take, take life's punches and uh, keep moving along. So you went from not running June of this year to a month to a month and a half later running 41 miles straight. Yeah. So June 3rd, I ran a two mile run. And I was gassed. I was like, man, I'm tired. There's just no way I can run more. And I stopped at two miles. And then I had a goal to run 38 miles July 18th. It was my friend's birthday. He turned 38 years old for his birthday. He wanted to run 38 miles to celebrate his 38th birthday. Those are the kind of friends that I have, just just crazy mofos. So from June 3rd until June, July 17th, I had six weeks to train and uh, just put in the work and I ended up actually running 41 miles that day and not 38, just because I I felt pretty good to hit 38. And I was thinking, why not hit 40? I'm at 38. And uh, yeah, so it was was a fun training, fun program, and just been sticking with it since. It's it's part of my lifestyle now. There we go. There we go. That is awesome. (laughs) 41 miles, dude. Congratulations. That is an accomplishment for sure. Thanks, brother. I got a friend that just did 100 miles in 25 hours and nine minutes. Ran straight, didn't sleep. That's, that's where I'm trying to be, Tim, is getting to the, the 100, mark, 100 mile mark. So there's, you think you're doing something and you're thinking, man, that's pretty cool. There's always people doing things way bigger and better than you. Yeah. Yeah. Are you a David Goggins fan? Yeah. Uh, Can't Hurt Me was a book that definitely resonated really well with me. And uh, I wish I could say I've seen David Goggins run. I live in Las Vegas and uh, I I think he does have a residence here. And I'm pretty sure some of his Instagram videos where he's looking at the camera and telling you not to be a bitch. Hopefully I can cuss. They're doing that in Vegas. He's he's filming in Vegas, right? Like be hard. Don't be a bitch. I'd love to run past him and, uh, you know, run, run next to him. So to, to answer your question, yes, definitely a lot of respect for, for Mr. Goggins. Yeah. Yeah. No, I got you. I got you for sure. For sure. Well, awesome, man. Tell us about your motivation. What gets you up and keeps you going every day? You know, I'm not a big fan of motivation. I, I really like to reframe it in the sense of 
having drive, having discipline, having habits, anyone can be motivated, right? So I try not to put myself in that category of being motivated because I've been guilty of being motivated for a couple of weeks and then the flame dies, right? Anyone can be motivated for a couple of days. Few people can be motivated for a few weeks. Even a smaller group of people can be motivated for a few years. And then a very select few can be driven, can be motivated, however you want to describe it for a decade or however long it takes to win. And that's where I'm at with my life, Timmy, is playing the long game. I'm, I'm 33 years old. My company is four years old. We do low seven figures a year. We've got clients and customers in all 50 states. And I feel like I'm just getting started. So that's where I look at my drive and my habits and my choices and how I can get up in the morning and do the things that I know I need to do, but I might not want to do them, right? We all have that, right? I don't want to wake up in the morning and have to stretch and go to the gym or read this book, or sometimes I don't feel like showing up to the office or working, right? We all, nobody wants to, no one, very few people can do the things that they want to do every single day, every single hour, right? There's just things that you have to get past where emotionally you don't want to move forward or something, but you know, it needs to be done despite you feeling tired, despite you feeling not in the mood, despite you feeling not in it to win it, you still have to set aside your excuse and follow through with your commitment. So to me, my commitment, what drives me is, is to win, is to show up where my daughter can look at me as an example. My wife can be proud of me. My employees can look at me and be proud of what we've built. My friends can look at me and be you know, inspired or respect the person I am, right? I'm, I'm very team oriented. I grew up playing sports. So I'm all about, you know, that camaraderie and, and that communication. And that's, that's really what drives me is, is making an impact and showing up and, and being somebody that people can look up to. Hmm. There we go. There we go. I love it. And tell us, uh, have you been disciplined your whole life? Or when did you make the shift to that frame of like motivation to discipline? No, nah, I haven't been disciplined my whole life. And I would say that getting to a point where you're disciplined is just a work in progress. I don't eat clean 100% of the time. I, I live by a, a rule. I do my very, very, very best to live by this rule. Times where I can't live by this rule is maybe I'm traveling or just some anom anomaly. But I try not to F up two days in a row. Right. If I'm going to eat like shit one day, then day three or day two, maybe I slip up a little bit, but day three, I, I can't. Right. If I miss two days in the gym or if I don't exercise two days in a row, I can't go more than two days. It's really easy once you go to that third, fourth day. Next thing you know, it's a week, it's a month. Right. So it's easy to fall off track, whether it's reading a book whether it's doing content, whether it's, you know, exercising, whatever it is, you, you, you have to create those habits in, in those routines. So for me, I just got tired of living a mediocre life and being able to not have the results that I want. Ultimately, the only reason why you're not where you want to be financially, spiritually, emotionally, physically with your relationships, it's only one person. And it's the person that you look at in the mirror. It's, it's you. And the reason why you're not where you want to be is because of the choices that you're making and you're not making the right choices because you're probably not disciplined. You're probably not committed. You probably are telling people that you're motivated and committed, but when no one's looking, when the light's not shining in the dark, you aren't making the right choices. So, you know, I would say probably once I turned 30, 31, 32, I was more intentional about, Hey, this is where I'm at with my life. Next thing you know, I'm going to be 40 years old. I'm going to be 50 years old. Time is something that we we undervalue. I think it's easy to get into the mentality of, oh, I'll get to that later. Oh, I got plenty of time. You, you never know when it's your last day. We underestimate how much we can get done. And we put ourselves in a position where we're behind the eight ball. It's like you're in college or you're in high school and you know you have that, that paper due. You know you got to write that paper and it's due Monday. And there you are Sunday night at midnight trying to get that paper done because you've been procrastinating the whole time, right? You just weren't disciplined the week before, the prior week and getting shit done. So just tired of living that way and just being more intentional and more control of my time. 
is, uh, you know, really what, what inspired me to, you know, have more intention on, on habits and, you know, discipline and choices. There we go. There we go. And did you have to make any changes in your community to make that shift or was it just uh, you against you the whole way through? I credit a lot of my success to me, to the people I surround myself. I would say probably 2018, 2019. And this parallels with the time frame I was telling you where I started to get more disciplined when I was about 30. Right around that time frame is when I started to invest in myself. I had never really read books, didn't listen to podcasts, didn't go to events, didn't really understand even what self-help meant, self-development. And I started investing into coaching programs and the masterminds you know, three, four years ago. And then next thing you know, I'm surrounding myself with higher caliber people, people that are disciplined, people that make moves despite their excuses. They make moves despite their adversity. They make things happen despite the challenges, despite the pain that they're facing. So that, that really helped me to me because we're a product of our environment. We've all heard of the saying, birds of a feather, the same feather flock together, right? The other one we all heard is, you know, you take the five people you hang out with, you're an average of those people. And you keep hearing that because it's true. Your environment shapes everything. So I would encourage you if, if you're not where you want to be, I would audit your circle, right? Who is influencing you? Who are you allowing into your space? Who are you allowing to influence you. And I'm very meticulous on the people I spend time with. Am I able to walk away from that conversation, either impacting them, them impacting me, right? There's, it's, it's aligned with my goals. It's aligned with what I'm trying to accomplish. So having people in your life, having those kinds of relationships is, is super massive. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I love it. Well, now we're going to jump into your dreams and goals. Tell us about your vision for your company and your life. Ultimately, I'd love to fire myself. I'd love to not, I'd love to empower my team more where they're running more of the day-to-day -day operations than, than myself. And that's going to allow my team to, to grow, to make more money, make more impact. And then you know, I, I love doing other things besides helping people access their retirement accounts, penalty and tax free. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm big into sports. I'm big into the youth. I, I grew up right. 12 years old is when I grew up without a father. My dad left to a different country and, and left my mom and I where it was just her and I from that point on. And there was a lot of struggle financially, a lot of pain that we experienced. So I have a, a place in my heart for, you know, kids that grew up in broken homes um, I was addicted to drugs between 18 and 20 years old. I had a daughter when I was 19 years old and those types of uh, events that took place, I think it breaks a lot of people. I don't know the statistic, but if, if you were a druggie in your youth and, and I'm not talking about, you know, smoking weed or drinking alcohol, I was, I was addicted to Oxycontin. Um, I've been clean since 2008, 2009, uh, rather, but from 2007 to 2009, I was abusing Oxycontin on the daily. And I would assume a college dropout, someone that grew up in a broken home, didn't grow up with money and abused a hardcore drug, you know, like Oxycontin, which essentially is an opiate, which essentially is heroin in a form of a pill. The likelihood of that person succeeded, succeeding probably isn't too high. I don't know the number. But what I'm getting at is there's a lot of people in our country, a lot of youth that are growing up in a similar type of environment and sports really helped me, you know, having that escape, learning commitment, learning teamwork, learning camaraderie, learning communication. So sports was a big part of, of, of me growing up. And uh, I definitely see myself getting into that at some point and, and giving back to the youth because it, it hits close for, you know, hits home close for me. Gotcha. Gotcha. I love that. And do you see that in the version of a uh, like nonprofit foundation, just something you do on the side? How do you see that manifest? That's a great question. That's um, I know that's the impact I want to make, right? Kids between, you know, seven, eight years old to 18 years old, troubled youth growing up in a broken home. That, that's who I want to serve and, and who I want to help. How exactly that's going to happen, I don't quite understand, but I do know for that to take place, 
I, I, I got to get my, my main thing to be my main thing times a hundred times a thousand. And for that to happen, I have to bring people along the way. I've, I've got to empower my team and, and, and breed more leaders and put better systems and processes in place so we can scale this thing. Um, so then that way, my main thing can feed the, 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 the main people, the players, the, the, the team that make up Quest Education, all of the, the staff. So then that way the machine can, can do what it's, what it's doing. And, you know, at some point in time, I can, you know, spend some other time elsewhere to, to fill up some of these passions that I have. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I love it. So we got fire yourself by empowering your team and help troubled kids between seven and 18 in a broken home, transform their lives. Any other dreams or goals that you want to chat about? Now I was trying to think about, you know, if I die, what, would people think about, right? And, and I, th I think people should think about that question more often. Again, going back to what I said earlier, we forget that the amount of time that we're on here in this earth is very short, right? In the grand scheme of things, it's, it's a very, very small amount of time. But yet we think we're going to be here forever, right? Because we procrastinate. Oh, I'll get to that next week. Oh, I'll get to that next month. Oh, maybe next year, right? So for me, it's a matter of, okay, how can I start having better conversations with myself, deeper conversations with myself? If I die, you know, how am I going to be remembered? If you die and you're listening to this right now, how are you going to be remembered? And really be honest with yourself. Are you going to be remembered as, you know, that, that person that was, you know, a nice guy and that's about it, right? Like that's pretty surface level stuff, right? I, I want to be remembered for deeper level context right where i'm creating massive impact in in the community and for that to happen i have to really penetrate some some layers and and really get to to some roots of some issues which we all know you know there's a tons of kids in foster care we have a big drug problem obesity is uh, at a massive you know place in in society so you know, all of those things, if, if I can make a difference in that, in that, you know, environment and change a lot of people's lives, then you know, when I do pass, when I do die, you know, I think people are, are going to say more than, you know, he was a cool dude or he was nice, right? I, I want to be remembered for something more than that. Gotcha. I love it. I love it. I'm curious on your thoughts on this because I have big aspirations like that too. I want to help a lot of people, want to impact a lot of people. And in my head, what I, businesses are like sustainably profitable. So you provide a service and you can hire your team with the profits of the business and you, you can scale because of profit. But when you're solving a lot of these problems that have just been persisting throughout society, it's almost like you have to sink funds into them. So funds, time, resources, because you're not getting like value out of it. Because a lot of times there are people who aren't people or systems who aren't ready to give value back, if that makes sense. And so I'm curious your thoughts on this. Um, have you thought of like profitable ways to help troubled kids between the ages of seven and 18? Like that's a population that like, they're not really going to give you a thousand bucks for a service so you can impact their life. So you can sustainably scale it. Does that make sense? Yeah. And, and that's why, you know, I've, I've mentioned that my main focus right now is is my main thing, my, my baby, the the business that's been the last four years doing what it's been doing. And in the grand scheme of things, four years is not a long time in business. So my thought process is this is having businesses, having investments that are generating income where I don't need the opportunity for me to impact the youth. I don't need that to make money. I'm not doing it for money. I'm, I'm doing it out of my own heart to fill up my cup because that makes me happy providing impact to these kids because I know it's helping them and I don't need the money, right? I've, I've got multiple things going on over here that's bringing me enough cash flow where I can take my time and, and, and pour it into this other area, but I can't get off the podcast with you right now and start helping the kids out the way I want, because I'm not at the point at that point yet. Right. And, and maybe yeah. I'm at that point when I'm 38 years old, I'm 45 years old. I don't know. Right. I'm, I'm playing the long game going back to what I said earlier, you know, people can be motivated for a couple of days. People can be motivated for a few weeks, 
not very few not very few people can be driven to stay in the game for 5 10 15 years and i know this because i've seen a lot of people give up on their dreams i've been around a lot of entrepreneurs that are successful and that didn't happen in a year right it happened over a long period of time right the long game is the long game it doesn't happen overnight. There's not this magic pill that you just take that all of a sudden your, your cash flow positive, right? And, and I know this to be true because, you know, when I first started this business, there was plenty of times where I did not make money, like zero money. My money that came into the business went to payroll. It went to this marketing campaign. It paid this vendor. It, it paid for the CRM, right? I had to invest back into the business to be where I'm at today. And I think a lot of people forget about that. They go on Instagram and, and they see people on their stories or posts and they're traveling and, you know, they've got serial entrepreneur and their, you know, Instagram bio and they have CEO in, in their profile and they think, oh, you know, this guy's just balling. Dude, business is not easy. If it was so easy, everyone would be doing it. Most businesses go out of business within the first few years and the ones that stay in the business who knows how many of those are you actually even profitable, right? So the odds of making it work five, 10, 15 years and you're profitable aren't very high in your favor. However, I think that's why most business owners stay in business because we're so freaking stubborn. We're so hard headed. We don't want to work for someone else, right? We started a business. You started a company or you want to start a business because you want time freedom. You want financial freedom. You want to be able to give back to your family, give back to your community. You want to be able to do the things you want to do when you want to do them. However, getting to that point, it's going to take time. It's going to take you getting past some, some, some walls. When, when I'm, what I love about long distance running is you hit a wall at some point. Right now, I usually hit a wall at like mile 20. When I hit mile 20, I hit this wall where immediately like my calf tightens up or my quad tightens up and I get things in my head where I'm doubting myself, man, I don't know how I'm going to get to mile 30, man. Maybe I should just stop right now. That happens in business all the time. And I heard a really good quote from someone one day that just really resonated with me. The amount of money you make in business, the success you have in business is directly tied to the amount of pain you can withstand. Financial pain, pain letting an employee go, pain experiencing a partnership that breaks up, pain and not seeing your family, Right. I'm not a big proponent of grind all day, 24 seven sleep is for wussies and, you know, grind all day. I don't really subscribe to that. However, there is a time and a place to grind, right? There is a time and a place where you have to earn your stripes and you have to put in the work. However, the goal is to put in a lot of work in a minimal time, earn your stripes, but then you're, you're building your business. Like you want to sell it one day. No one wants to buy your business if you are your business. If you have no processes and systems along the way, no no team along the way, no 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 actual business. Because if you sell your business, who you you sell your business to, they want to take the business and keep running with it, right? But if they buy your business and you are the business, they're not going to buy your business because you actually don't have a business. You just have a high paying job that you created for yourself and you can't even go on vacation without checking your phone every few minutes because you're the bottleneck of your business, right? But it takes the time to get out of that situation. You do have to grind to get to that point. And, you know, I'm, I'm still in the grind phase, you know, four years in business is not a long time to be in, in business. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, awesome, man. I appreciate you sharing that. If there were one or two people that you could meet right now, and this could be a specific person or a type of person, and they'd really help you take the next step towards these dreams and goals, who would they be and how would they help you? Definitely would love to have a conversation with Elon Musk. I think that would be quite interesting. And I actually had someone that I interviewed on my podcast uh, yesterday, and uh, his name is Steve Sims. He's He's a stud. And he does some work with Elon Musk. And I asked him, I said, man, tell me about Elon Musk. What, what was something that was interesting about you? And he's like, dude, when you talk with them, it's like you're on the stand and you're just getting grilled. Like, well, why would you do that? Well, how come you haven't done this? Well, ma what makes you want to do this? And he's like, it's, it's really intense. Like his brain just operates com like just completely different. And uh, so I think it'd be cool to be grilled by Elon Musk. Mm -hmm. Second person. And you said dead or alive or it don't matter? Uh, sure. Are they alive? Go for it. I'm Go sorry. For it. 
Dead or alive works. Okay. You've already said one alive. So okay. Good. So I'll go with someone that's that's dead. Definitely would love to have a conversation with Winston Churchill. Uh, that that dude's a beast. I mean, he was kind of like the last line of defense there in Europe when Hitler was just knocking people out, right? Hitler yeah. knocked out France, knocked out all these countries, and it was just Britain that was kind of the last line of defense. And obviously the United States helped, but you know, I'm sure Winston Tr Churchill had to endure a ton of pain to uh, keep, keep the, the the troops and the community, you know, going and the spirit going. So I know he's he's a hell of a leader. So definitely would love to have a conversation with him. Yeah, absolutely. There we go. Have you ever read like a biography or autobiography of him? Yeah, one of my employees got me that for Christmas. And it's like 600 pages. This shit's <laughs> like huge. I have not read it. It's chilling in my bookcase, but it is, it is, is uh, something I want to read. There we go. Well, name the most important one or two things that everyday people can do to help you accomplish your dreams and goals. So you meet Sally at the grocery store and Sally's like, Daniel, how can I help you out? What would you tell her? So Sally asking me how she can help me. Yep. And I, I, I would turn it around right it's just like at the end of the day it's it's not about you know what what i'm getting it's i'm a big believer in giving back because it's going to come back around i'm i'm a college dropout i didn't grow up with money and i own a company that you know has helped a lot of people over the years and a big reason why i believe that's happened is because i've been able to add value in the marketplace and and provide an impact to people and, and shit just comes back around. That was something that, you know, I didn't learn until, you know, probably my mid twenties in terms of, I think it's really easy to think about, man, what's in it for me or, you know, or for me to help you out, like you got to help me out first. And when you really just listen to people and find out what their problem is or how you can help shit just comes back around. So I, I was just going to flip the question and, and, you know, one thing that can help you get from point A to point B is having a stronger mindset and one way to have a stronger mindset is really adopt the the mentality of one more and i'll give you a story i was in in la at a gym and it was a, a station where if you ever seen timmy where it's like a, a pull-up bar but then there's you know like you can do dips in it too like assisted dips right so it's like kind of two in one so i'm doing pull-ups doing my sets, I do a, a set of 10 or 15 pull-ups, whatever it was. And then I take like a 30 second break. This lady comes up to me and she's probably 50, 60 years old. And she's like, Hey, do you mind if I do some sit-ups um, to some ab work in between your sets? I said, absolutely. You're fine. Go ahead. We can work out together. She's like, okay, no worries. I'm only going to do three sets of these, of this ab exercise and I'll be out of your way. I said, no, you're not. I said, you're going to do four. And she looked at me and she's like, I, I can't, I can't do four. I'm barely going to do three, do three. So no, you're going to do four. So I do my set and she does her set. Next thing you know, she does three and like, she's about to leave. So, where are you going? You have one more. You said you're going to do four. So I don't know if I could do it. She busts out one more set. And then she looks at me and she's just, I could just see in her eyes. Like you, she just had a ton of confidence. Like she felt so accomplished and it's something so little in the grand scheme of things, but she looked at me and she said, I'll never forget you. Like, thank you for having me do this. I didn't think I could do it, but I did it. And I'm, I'm going to think about you when I come here. And that just goes to show you that we leave a lot on the table. We all have one more in our life, whether it's one more rep in the gym, one more phone call, one more page of a book you read, one more minute you spend with your daughter, one more minute you spend with your wife. Like all of those one mores add up and mentally we seek comfort. We seek the easy road. So those one mores are hard because they're not habitual. We have to intentionally think about, man, let me just one more. And the more you do that, then it becomes a habit. I love that. I think it was in the compound effect. It, it kind of had that concept of like, just always going a little over the top, like doing a little more or doing a little like, um, just like the shock factor of life. And when you do that consistently, you just build a shocking life, right? So I really like that concept. It adds up. For sure. Well, now we're gonna jump to our thriving three. 
And our first question is, what is your favorite book, movie, or podcast? Pick one. Hmm. Book, I would go with How to Win Friends and Influence People. I was in college at 18 years old. Went to college because that's what society told me to do. Had no idea what I was going to go to college for. It's not like I went to college thinking I'm going to be an engineer or I'm going to go to college to become a lawyer. I just went to college because it was 2007 and that's what society told me to do. I dropped out after three months because the soccer season was over. I really only went to college just to play soccer. So soccer season was over. I wasn't even going to class. And I remember, I remember meeting somebody that got me a job in the sales industry. And I'm thinking sales. I never thought I would do sales. Like, What does sales involve? And I remember my sales training to me was the sales trainer coming in. There was a room of eight of, eight of us. I was 18 years old, super nervous. And my first sales job. And the sales training consisted of, here is the video you're going to watch. I'm going to press play. It's called The Secret. Watch The Secret. And then here's your script. That was the training. <laughs> and I remember shortly after that, someone recommended a, that I read How to Win Friends and Influence Other People. And that book was just a game changer for me. I mean, this is a book for those of you that don't know. It was written like in the 1920s from Dale Carnegie. And it just talks about how to communicate with people, how to truly influence people. And not from a standpoint of manipulating them in a nefarious way, but truly being able to influence people and, and help them make a decision that benefits everybody and having more empathy and asking better questions. And that was a game changer book for me that I still apply in my life today. Yeah, no, that's uh, definitely in my top books as well. I've like read it over and over, listened to it over and over. It's just such a good book. The concepts it teaches are so good. And I actually was onto that book because Warren Buffett was like, that's one of, the, one of the two books that really changed his life. So yep. big fan, big fan. Uh, what is one way you like to take care of yourself? Move my body. I'm very intentional about moving my body, whether it's going on a run, whether it's going to the gym, whether it's stretching. I'm a huge proponent of how you treat your body, how you show up in your fitness, your health, your nutrition. That's going to have a direct reflection on how you show up in business, how you show up for your family, how you show up for your friends. I, I, I truly believe that you have to be selfish and hear me out here. What I truly am trying to say is how can you fill up other people's cup if your cup isn't filled, right? So that's what I mean by selfish is you have to fill up your cup first. And if you have choices and decisions that you're making or your cup is constantly filled because you're in a good place mentally, you're in a good place spiritually, you're in a good place physically, and your cup is constantly getting filled because your cup is going to drain, right? Life throws bullshit at you every single day. This challenge happens. This adversity that you did not expect takes place. Th this tragedy you experience, right? This is something that is bad that happens to you. And your cup gets drained. So you have to keep filling it. But other people rely on you. Your friends, your family, your kids, your spouse, your business partners, your employees. So if your cup isn't constantly getting filled, how are you going to fill up in their cup? You know, so I, I do things like take care of myself, my body, my nutrition, my physique. So my cup is constantly filled so I can pour into other people. Mm. There we go. Love it. And what is one action step you can take right now or continue to take if you're already doing it to get grilled by Elon Musk? Yeah, I think that kid, I don't remember his name, but I believe he was like 18 years old. And he came up with, he's a smart tech kid because he came up with some way of being able to GPS and track somebody. And if you Google Elon Musk kid GPS, you'll know what I'm, you're, you'll, the, the, the link will tell you more than what I'm going to say, but I'm paraphrasing it. Basically, this kid was able to track Elon Musk's flights on his private jet. And it got to the, and this kid would like post it on Twitter. And it got to the point where Elon like tweeted this kid and like had a conversation with him. And I think they were going back and forth. Elon like 
DM'd him or something or said something along the lines of like, yo, I'll give you 50 grand if you stop or something like this. And the kid's <laughs> like, no, I need 500 or something uh, along those lines. I, I, my, my numbers might be off. The story might be a little bit off, but the, 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 the context is pretty spot on. So that's a great way to get grilled by Elon, you know, create, be creative like that. There we go. Track is track is private flights. Right. <laughs> awesome. Well, now we're going to jump into our final series of questions. And they require a bit of pretext, so stick with me here. So a lot of people have come on the podcast and they've said that the catalyst that helps people change from having a fixed mindset, not willing to accept help and not willing to accept change, to having a growth mindset, being willing to accept help and being willing to accept change, the catalyst that has helped people made, make that switch is a personal choice that happens after either extreme inspiration or extreme desperation. Do you agree, disagree, have anything to add or subtract? I would say when you go through hard shit, desperate times, pain, suffering, doubt, fear, that that's where the good shit comes on the other side of that. So for me, I truly was able to go from a fixed mindset to a growth mindset, which I'll say I went from being a victim mentality to a gratitude mentality when I had my daughter when I was 19 years old, because prior to that, I had a victim mentality. I had a fixed mindset. I think having a fixed mindset and being a victim or having a victim mentality are very, very similar. And I think that's a big problem with society right now is there's a lack of ownership and it's pointing the finger. It's their fault. It's someone else's fault. I'm not successful because taxes are too high. The government sucks. I don't like the president, right? It's always somebody else, but not themselves. And that definitely was me a ton when I was younger, because I had the mentality of, I grew up without a dad. Woe is me. I'm strung out on pills, man. I just had a daughter at 18, 19 years old. Like, what am I going to do with my life? And I got to a point where, you know, I held my daughter in my hands. I'm 19 years old. And I remember Timmy looked at my daughter. I thought, man, this is amazing. Like my blood is in her blood. This is what it's like to be a father. And I immediately thought about my dad and I hadn't talked to him for about seven years. He lived in Mexico. I lived in the United States. We hadn't talked and he stopped showing up in my life after I was 12 years old. So I held on to a lot of resentment and just negative emotions towards him. And because I was projecting my victim mentality out in the universe, I immediately shifted myself and I thought, you know what? How badass that I had a dad that was amazing up until I was 12 years old. He was a good dad. And at least I was even given a father. Some kids aren't even have a, have a dad in their life. Or worse, they have a dad that's a piece of shit their whole life. And it's just a negative influence. Maybe they're strung out, strung out on drugs. Maybe they abused them. Like just bad, bad stuff. I didn't have that. I'm grateful that I even had a dad. And then I'm grateful that because my dad left, it forced me to grow up quicker. I didn't have a dad show me how to tie a tie. I didn't have a dad show me how to drive for the first time, but my friends did. How come my friends did, but I did it again. That's being a victim. So I shifted all of that. I'm thinking, man, I'm just so grateful that my dad left because I got to grow up quicker. I got to get more experience quicker. I got to get really tight with my mom. My mom is my hero, my MVP. Her and I got to be very, very close because we went through a lot of challenges and adversity together. I'm so grateful for all of that. I'm so grateful that I had a daughter at 19 years old because it taught me a ton about what it is like to be a dad at a young age. And her and I have a phenomenal relationship. So I just changed my mindset to have more gratitude. And it's easy to be grateful for the good shit, right? It's easy to be grateful when you're eating a steak and lobster di dinner, right? It's easy to be grateful when you pull up to your badass house. It's easy to be grateful when you make a million dollars or you had a six figure month or you just closed the big deal. Easy to be grateful. But can you be grateful for the bad shit? and uncovering the good shit and the bad shit. Cause there's always positive. There's always a lesson and even the most horrible experiences. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Given that same amount of inspiration or desperation, and I feel like you're going to be echoing yourself real quick. So you can just skip past this. If you are, um, why do you think some people make the choice to change and others don't? The last part, why do you think they make the choice to do what? Why do you think some people make the choice to change and others don't, given the same amount of extreme inspiration or extreme desperation? I think 
we all have a hand that we're dealt and the hand that we're dealt is the hand that we're dealt, right? You can't go back to the dealer and, Hey, I got a two and a seven. I'm playing poker. Give me two aces. It doesn't work that way. Right? So some people accept the hand that they're dealt. And again, going back to comfort, we came out the womb seeking comfort, right? We came out the womb in survival mode, right? All we wanted to do was be warm, be near our mom and get the milk, right? Like that's surviving. That's comfort. We came out the womb that way. And why would it change as we get older? We seek easy. We seek the path of comfort. We seek familiarity. That's where it takes you intentionally seeking something different. I'm training my mind. I buy into the concept of difficult times, discomfort, pain, feeling uncomfortable, challenging, having doubt. I, I know on the other side of that is growth, is success, is me becoming a better version of me. And because I think that way, I'm okay dealing with a hand that I'm dealt that isn't the best. But most people don't think that way, right? Most people think I'm okay with what I have. But that's the thing. If you're happy with what you have, then more power to you. That's all that matters is you having peace, you having happiness. And everyone has a different definition of that. But most people that seek comfort, that seek complacency, are usually the people that are complaining, that have a negative mindset, that are not on the surface, they're okay. But deep down, they're not happy and fulfilled. And if that's you, then you need to seek discomfort. You need to seek a feeling of uncomfortableness because that's how you're going to grow. Hmm. Yeah, I love that. I think we're just wired to grow, right? Like, I feel like Tony Robbins says that a lot. Like, happiness comes from growth. And it seems pretty counterintuitive because usually when you're growing, it's painful and it's not comfortable. But it's like that, like, fulfillment really comes from growth. Oh, because it's it's a journey, right? The yeah. journey is going to have down times, but it's also going to have ups, right? That's, that's why you can't get too high and you can't get too low, right? That's one thing that business has taught me. That's one thing that running has taught me. You know, there's been plenty of times I'm on mile 14. I'm thinking, man, I feel great. I can run another 30 miles. I feel amazing. And then three miles later, I'm like, I'm done. I can't move yeah. any farther. I am thirsty. I'm tired. I feel like quitting. Maybe I should just stop right now. But then, you know, a few miles later, I feel great. You know, that's just like <laughs> business, right? Business is, oh my gosh, let me pick out a new car because I'm bawling. And then the next thing you know, you're thinking, man, what am I going to do if my business shuts down? Right. Yeah. What are people going to think about me if my business doesn't make it? And the next thing you know, a few minutes, you know, a little bit later, you're thinking, man, I can buy a new house, right? It's just, you can't get too high. You can't get too low. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, our next question is that some people need a small amount of desperation or inspiration to change and others need a larger consistent amount. What do you think establishes that threshold and can it be influenced? I mean, it definitely could be influenced by the people that you surround yourself with. That's why I'm a big proponent of investing into masterminds and the coaching programs. A lot of my best friends today, I didn't grow up with them. And that's a hard thing to do is separate yourself from your past. People that you grew up with, you don't have to be obligated to hang out with them, to be friends with them. I'm not saying be a jerk and have the approach of you're better than them. You make more money than them. You have a business and they don't. So you don't, I'm not going to associate with them. However, I want to be around people that are talking about growing, not about, you know, hey, let's go to the bar every single weekend and blow our money, right? Like, that's just not my crowd. That's just not my people's. Again, it just comes down to your goals, your alignment, and that's who you're going to figure out who you want to surround yourself with. And then to me, it just always comes down to as well, what, what are you shooting for? right? And in, in business, I mentioned to you what I'm shooting for. So my day to day choices, my week to week decisions have to be aligned with that goal. If it's not aligned with that goal, then emotionally, I have to set aside how I feel and make a tactical decision based off of my goals to either move forward with it or not. 
same thing with my fitness, same thing with, with, you know, my, my goals in the uh, health space, right? If it doesn't align, then I say yes. All right. You know, say no, depending on again, where I'm trying to go. So, you know, if you have something big enough that you're shooting for your choices are going to change and you're going to find drive and inspiration along the way, because, you know, you have something set in place, you have a mission, but then how committed are you to seeing that mission through and getting the results? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We got one last question for you. For this question, keep in mind a person who has a really fixed mindset, not willing to accept help, not willing to accept change. So in Atomic Habits, James Clear talks about the four laws of changing your behavior. And the laws are to make it obvious, make it attractive, make it easy, and make it satisfying. With that context in mind, and the avatar I just told you about, how can we, you and I, create an environment that makes it more obvious, more attractive, more easy, and more satisfying for that avatar to make the choice that will change their life? I would start first with your identity. Who, who do you see yourself as? One of my favorite concepts in that book that you referenced was, let's just say you're trying to quit uh, you know, smoking cigarettes. And James Clear brings up that example. Someone is wanting to quit smoking cigarettes. And the person is still identifies as, man, I'm, I'm a recovering smoker. I'm still trying to quit. And maybe they're a week clean, right? They haven't smoked for a week. And, and James just says, you're lowering your chances at getting the result that you want, which is to no longer smoke. If that's what you're putting out in the universe, I'm, I'm a recovering, you know, smoker. I'm still, I'm trying to quit. No, it's, I'm not a smoker, right? That's not who I am. And that's hard for some people to identify as something when they haven't seen the result. And there's a fine line between that because there's a lot of fake gurus out there. There's a lot of people that are phony on online. It's very easy to just make a profile and, and, and act the part on Instagram, right? But they're not the real deal behind the scenes. However, you do have to act as if, right? That result that you're seeking, that person that you want to be, you have to do the things that that person is already doing and identify as that person without you being there already. And that's tough because people get imposter syndrome, right? They start to doubt themselves. But if you come into it with acting as if and being clear with your identity and who you are, then it's going to be a lot easier for you to put yourself in that environment where you know, the whole easy um, environment and, you know, having some kind of reward is, is in place. It's just going to flow a lot better. I feel that. I feel that. Um, would you say that extends to, so on a personal level, it's like act like the person you want to be, but on an interpersonal level, would you say that extends to treat people as uh, the person they could be? Like, would you say it extends that far? That's where leadership comes into play, right? Accountability, right? At the end of the day, if you're going to battle with somebody and you guys are after the same mission and you see that person not living up to their potential, a real friend is going to call them out. Hey, man, something's off. Doesn't seem like you right now. What's going on, right? I, I want to be around people that are going to call me out because as long as I know that they have love for me and they are rooting for me, then I'm going to take what they're going to say and I'm going to listen. But if I'm getting called out from people that I know aren't rooting for me and they don't have that love for me that I know that my circle does, the people that I trust, then that's just noise. Right. And, and that's hard too to filter out the noise from the, the real people that have real things to tell you. Right. There, there's that, you know, inspirational quote or, you know, meme you've seen it a million times on Instagram. Like, who cares what people think about you? Like, pay no attention. I don't agree with that 100%. I don't care about what some troll has to say on one of my posts that comments is just talking shit. And, I've never had a conversation with him and he doesn't know who I am. I don't know who he is. 
And usually those people have no Instagram profile on their picture. Like they're just that kind of person. I pay no attention to that. Right. However, you know, someone that's been working with me for five years that knows me pretty well, and we're after the same mission and, and they say something where, Hey, you're, you're, you're falling short. You're not showing up. Like I know you can, what's up. That's the kind of people I want to be around. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I love it. Well, Daniel, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. That's all we got for you. Hey, Timmy, you're welcome. Appreciate you having me on the, on your stage here. Of course. Is there anything else you want to chat about before we sign off? I would say if people are feeling my vibe, if they want to learn more, head over to danielblue.me. That's my website on there. I've got a podcast called How Winners Win. The goal there is to help people win in their personal life, their financial life, their entrepreneurial life. We're on all your favorite uh, listening platforms. And then I've got a book uh, called Blueprints, Your Best Retirement, teaches you how to access your retirement accounts penalty and tax-free. And you can get that book on Audible or the hardcover or, or Kindle. And then if you do have a retirement account and you like the idea of accessing it penalty and tax-free, I, I got your wheels turning and you're thinking, man, maybe I can use my money to do this or do that. There's a ton of free information on my website, a lot of articles that I wrote. Some of them are, are on Forbes that you can read up more on and uh, you know, take some action on uh, what you feel is right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. There we go. Well, you guys heard him. If you loved what uh, Daniel had to say, you liked his vibe, all the ways to contact him will be down in the show notes. As we always ask, shoot this podcast over to one to three people you know need to hear this message. Go ahead and give us a five-star review on iTunes if you liked the show. And on that note, we're out. <laughs>